Hey guys, it's Kelly. Welcome back to my channel. Now I had a very, well not very, but I had a different video in mind for today. I wanted to do another installment of my best and worst series, but I'm not quite ready to focus in on just one brand and a variety of their products. I just need to give myself a little bit more time. But <laughs> there are some best and worst products that I really feel like passionate about talking about. So I'm gonna do a little different spin today. I wanna talk about my faves and fails from three different brands. So I'm gonna talk about uh, First Aid Beauty, which is a brand I've been enjoying exploring, but we do have a dud here today. I also want to talk about Keep Cool and Isn't Tree. So if you guys are so ready to get the video started, you know the drill. Give it a big thumbs up, play my intro, and let's get started. All right, let's start off with First Aid Beauty. And you know I've got uh, a few favorites from this brand already. I just included their cleanser in my December favorites video. That's been great. Um, I've been playing around with the repair cream as well. I will share on that soon enough. But um, the next product from them that I really consider like a, a, a true favorite is their Ultra Repair Wild Oat Hydrating Toner. And it's very different than a lot of the toners that I tend to like because I was surprised to find that this was a milky toner. I was surprised by that. I didn't expect it, but it is. It's it's a milky texture. It's got a little body to it, but it's got a gorgeous um, hydration uh, to it and a, a really nice absorbency to it. There is some hyaluronic acid in here, so it is meant to bring some hydration, but they're also packing it with some really lightly moisturizing and balancing ingredients that are particularly good for sensitive skin. The star ingredient here is the colloidal oatmeal, which is excellent for sensitive skin. You know, it's very skin conditioning, skin softening. It's got a good amount of antioxidants, but you know oatmeal is really like so famed for having a beautiful calming property for sensitive skin. So the oat, the oat is really at play here because it does have a fantastic calming property to it. It really, I've used this when my skin was feeling just a little bit over the edge, a little bit irritated, and this really does the trick but I was so excited to find this contains some of my favorite ingredients, honey and propolis extract. Yeah, I, you know I love propolis. I love it so much. It's such a great ingredient. It agrees with my skin so much. And it's just, it's such a fabulous moisturizing ingredient because it's not a greasy moisturization. It's a very balancing, um, non-oily, non-sticky, right, uh, non-thick type of moisture. And so it actually just blends into this formulation so gorgeously because it is, it's milky. It has calming moisture to it, but it doesn't leave you, you know, sticky or tacky at the top of your skin. It doesn't leave you shiny. There's no oiliness to this. It's just a really gorgeous, balancing, calming, soothing, like this just really takes care of your sensitive skin in such a lovely way. And it's just been, it's been really handy because I have been going through a little bit more dehydration, a little bit more irritation because of the winter weather. And so this has just been fitting into my skincare routine perfectly. So yeah, this is another rave fave from First Aid Beauty. But there is always a flip side to everything, is there not? And um, there is a product that I am not a very big fan of from First Aid Beauty. And in fact, it is a product that really kind of motivated me to make this video because I'm kind of fired up to talk about it. So buckle up. This is their weightless liquid mineral sunscreen. This is um, a sunscreen with zinc oxide and it is SPF 30. It is an American sunscreen, so we don't have a PA rating on this one. Now, let me start with what was kind of intriguing to me about this sunscreen, because this is actually something I'm kind of like excited to try out. Um, you know, I'm not that excited about mineral sunscreens, but I was actually curious about this one because this is not your run of the mill pasty white mineral sunscreen. This actually um, has what they're calling a universal tint to it. They have put a little like 
a little skin tint to it to help cut down on the white cast. So I was like, ooh, this could be really interesting because this could give you like a little bit of coverage maybe while also wearing your sunscreen. It does look pretty dark when you get it out from the tube, but I did find the tint to be pretty flattering. Like it did um, actually work on my skin tone really nicely. It, it can work for a variety of people. It is quite sheer. However, let's talk about that texture while we're, we're on the subject, right? Because it is a very liquidy type of texture. This isn't creamy. This is very liquidy when you get it out of the bottle. And as I mentioned, it is kind of dark with the tint, but it does sheer out. However, super duper strange. There's like grits in this. There's like little sand particles. It's chunky. Like OMG, I was like, did I get a bad bottle? No, I confirmed this on the internet. Like all the reviews are talking about that it has this rough texture to it. And I was like, well, maybe it'll dissolve or go away. No, so freaking weird. I was like applying this to my face and it felt like a little physical exfoliation and not in a good way because my skin, as I mentioned earlier, is feeling a little bit more on the sensitive side. So something that would have just been like, uh, this is weird was actually like, oh, this hurts. You know, sunscreen is all about creating a continuous film on your skin. And so you do have to really get in there. You really do have to spread it evenly. You got to get in all the nooks and crannies. You got to take your time, right? You know, you, you got to apply it with a little bit of purpose, right? And a little bit of patience. And that's not great when your skin is hurting because there's these little micro sandy type of particles. I'm super sensitive, you know, it, it may not bother other people, but it is something to think about. It's like when you can't stand spreading the sunscreen onto your skin, you might cut some corners. And so it was really unpleasant. I was not loving that aspect of this sunscreen. I was um, actually impressed, as I mentioned before, how the tint really kind of blended into my skin tone really nicely, but I was a little disappointed that it didn't really add coverage. Like it didn't act like a tone of cream or anything like that. It didn't really um, even out my complexion at all, which was really something I was kind of looking forward to with this sunscreen and it, it really didn't do that. The other thing about this sunscreen is just it really, it's kind of greasy. Like it just kind of has like a greasy finish to it or a dewy finish to it. It just never really, um, it just never really like fully dried down on my skin. I felt like it was always kind of like just sitting on top of my skin. Um, I went to blow my nose at some point in the afternoon and I, it like rubbed off onto the tissue and you could see it cause of the tint, which was kind of gross. I was afraid it was going to like transfer onto the collars of my shirt. I just didn't really like how it finished on my skin. Um, and then of course, this is a personal thing. I don't think this happens to everybody and you may not experience that with this sunscreen, but I just, I always have to say it dried my skin out. You know, it, it happens with mineral sunscreen. Some people I think are more susceptible to it. I happen to be very susceptible to it. This was not an exception to any of the other mineral sunscreens that have dried out my skin. This really did dry out my skin. So. Yeah, I'm just not really a huge fan of this. There's some massive factors like hello grits and not great, not great, not great. First Aid Beauty, this is not my favorite, but you guys got some other products that I think are excellent. So next up, I want to talk about Keep Cool because it's a brand that you hear me talk about a lot, particularly because I just like am always using their bamboo toner, right? And I really easily could have made that my fave for Keep Cool, but I wanted to kind of like shed the spotlight on some other what I find to be really excellent products from them. And one that I've just been loving a lot lately from them is their Keep Cool and Soothe Cream. This is actually a product that doesn't get as much love in the Keep Cool universe. So I wanted to shed a little bit of love onto this. Now you can really think about this like a Sika cream really, cause it's like, it's a very anti-irritation type of cream. It's meant to calm down skin, soothe sensitive skin, reduce redness, and really kind of like repair irritated skin. And it does all of those things beautifully. The texture of this is super interesting too, because it's actually like, hmm, cottage cheese? <laughs> so gross. It's lumpy, it's chunky. <laughs> 
<laughs> I don't know what else to say. And I really want to tell you that because you might get this cream and be like, did I get a dud? Is this bad? No, it's normal. This is what it's supposed to look like. It's a chunky cream, um, but it, it does uh, smooth out with the warmth of your fingertips. So as you spread it, it, it becomes super creamy, really smooth. It is a shea butter based cream and it's very moisturizing. You know, I, I use this a lot like a Sika cream. I talk about it as an anti-irritation cream, but it really, it really can be a moisturizer. It really has been formulated to be a moisturizer on your skin. I don't know about you, but like when my skin gets really irritated, it really benefits and really seems to calm down. Yes, from hydration. Yes, from calming extracts, but also from just plain old moisture. It really just comforts my skin. I mean, this is called a soothe cream. That's definitely like an excellent word for it. It does soothe irritated skin. It calms it down so well. It's particularly good if you do tend to get some redness as well. I found it to be really amazing for that. Really, really good. A lot of Sika creams do tend to have some benefits for acne. This one, not as much. I mean, it's not going to be bad for acne. It's just not going to help it that much, in my opinion. I haven't seen it really do miracles for pimples that I've had. But for irritation, for dehydration, for redness and inflammation on the skin, it's a really gorgeous cream. Doesn't get a lot of love, but I think it's great. Now, I will admit, you know, there aren't like any like super duper massive fail products from Keep Cool, like, you know, buyer beware. Definitely not. No. Um, but there are some products in their line that just really haven't, you know, wowed me. They haven't really impressed me and I don't get super excited about. And this happens to be one of those products. It is the Keep Cool and Soothe Lotion. Now, I do just want to say that there's a very good chance the reason that I'm not super excited by this product is because it's just not really for my skin type. And that's a massive thing to take into consideration for any type of review that you are watching or reading, right? You know, the reviewer's skin type. Now, I am technically combination skin. I do produce oil up here in my T-zone, but I have a really big area of dryness on my skin, that U-zone, cheeks and chin, and it tends to be my overriding concern. I don't really care about the oil. Keep it there. It's usually okay, but I, I do tend to treat my skin a lot more for the dryness on it. Lotions in K-Beauty, by the way, are kind of a confusing product concept. I mean, you really want to think about them as like a multitasking emulsion because they can be used a couple of different ways. You know, they can be used to add like a little booster into your skincare routine right before your moisturizer. That's kind of the the traditional order of a lotion in like the K-Beauty 10-step routine. It would go like after your serums, you would do an emulsion or a lotion and then a moisturizing cream. But uh, especially if you have a lot more oil on your skin or you just prefer very lightly moisturizing products, lotions can be used as your final layer, your final moisturizing layer. And they're definitely a lot more breathable, a lot more lightweight than moisturizing creams, right? This is interesting because this is a very humectant type of lotion, meaning it actually has a lot of hyaluronic acid in it and it feels very hydrating. It feels very plumping. There's actually not a lot of moisture to this. There's very light balance to it, but it's just like a very creamy, plumping, very liquidy type of texture. It's super interesting because you kind of think this is gonna be really thick you know, just kind of based on, on the texture, it, you, it kind of looks like Laneige Cream Skin Refiner a little bit maybe, like it's gonna be really moisturizing and really rich and maybe like has some, like an oil slip to it. It's not that at all. It feels very much like hyaluronic acid. It's really plumping. It's got balance. It's got a little whisper of moisture to it, but it's just not really nourishing. It's just not really something that adds a huge dose of moisture into your skincare routine, especially for being a lotion or an emulsion type of product. I do expect a little bit more towards the end of the routine. Again, this is what I personally want for my skin. And that's why I'm not that impressed with this product. It's just kind of like one of those things that just feels really like an addition into your routine that you don't really need. I think if you are super duper oily and you are seeking for that final but really light layer this may not work it may work it may not work it may not be the best for you there may be better products out there that's just my personal feeling about this 
I don't think anything about it is bad. I just don't think anything about it is exceptional. And now I want to talk about Isn't Tree. There's a lot of different ones that I could have um, featured for my faves. And don't worry, like this is on my list for one of the next episodes of Best and Worst of. Definitely. I have many opinions about lots of their products. It's coming soon. But one that I really wanted to highlight that I've been reaching for so much this past summer and fall is their Real Mugwort clay mask then this is a real winner to me personally because this actually changed my mind about clay masks because I don't actually like clay masks but I love this one so when I was younger I used to use clay masks and probably abuse clay masks all the time and I remember early in my k-beauty journey using the Innisfree not Isntree <laughs> Innisfree I always like want to confuse those names in my mind they're just too similar but you know that um, volcanic clay mask they're super popular for right I use that quite a bit and um, it just kind of ended up stripping my skin I didn't really understand that it was actually not you know great for my skin it was definitely pulling up the gunk and all that but it was actually taking a lot of essential moisture and drying out my skin and so yeah i just eventually realized that clay masks weren't great for the way that my skin had evolved you know throughout the years and so i just actually just stopped using them and then i discovered this and this changed a lot and it really has nothing to do with mugwort even though that's one of my favorite ingredients it really has nothing to do with that it just has to do with the fact that this is a gentle clay mask that's incredibly effective it really a lot of the things i don't like about clay masks this just doesn't even enter that territory this is not a clay mask that takes a lot of moisture with it and in fact this clay mask doesn't really seem to dry out too much like it doesn't turn super duper chalky dry on your skin it still maintains a, a touch of moisture to it but holy moly like this is effective it's gentle but it's effective uh, you know, my skin is quite oily in the T-zone, and so my pores can get quite enlarged, especially around my nose area, and I can get quite a bit of texture on my forehead. This is really great for, like, T-zone masking, especially if you're combination skin. Like, don't be afraid to put a mask in just one area of your face. Um, Multi-masking can be really effective when you have two different zones on your face that are doing two different things. My chin and cheeks they're doing a whole different thing than that T-zone. And this is particularly good for the T-zone because it really sucks the excessive oil out of your pores. And it really actually helps to remove some of the gunk, like the, the real top most layer of gunk that makes your pores look really big and enlarged and stretched out. It actually helps to clean some of that out, like even just on the first use. And that actually helps make my pores look a lot smaller and more refined on my nose. And I do say look, because they do just kind of always maintain the size that they're at, right? But you can make them look better. And this mask can really help that. With like regular use, you know, I produce more oil in the summer and in, into the fall. With regular like one-time use of this mask, I've noticed that it really helped cut down on the little bumpy, tiny little textures on my forehead and really help keep my pores clean. I can't rave about this enough. If you're really into clay masks or you're somebody like me, super sensitive skin, maybe you have bouts of dehydration or areas of dryness on your skin and areas of oiliness, you know, clay masks can probably help you, but you're afraid of the dryness factor, get this one. Like seriously, just get this one. It works so, so good. I. I really, I, I just so recommend this. Now, as I mentioned, you know, there was a lot of different options for what was the one product I wanted to feature as my fave. I have many from Isn't Tree. I will admit the, the candidates for fails is slimmer. There are, you know, there's some duds. There's some fails, in my opinion, in this line. But one that I really wanted to feature, because I'm just picking one, <laughs> the one that I wanted to feature just in this video is the one that I think is the most appealing, the most interesting looking one, and the one that I feel like just Mm, didn't really perform. <laughs> and that is the Sika Relief Ampule. This is super interesting, right? Because there are these tiny little ampule like vials. There was about, I'd say maybe six weeks of use in this, maybe four weeks, depending on how often you're using it. It's about 11 um, mil of product, but it does come in a box of two. So you do get two in one go, but really the idea of this is to keep the ingredients super duper fresh because they actually package it in a two-phase kind of product. So you've got like the little Sika like 
concentrated goodness and then like the rest of the ampule and when you pump the bottle that breaks the seal you shake it up really good and then the entire ampule mixes together this keeps the ingredients super potent and super fresh and they do really tell you you got to use this up within six months of shaking it all up together and that's part of the reason why it is so small I didn't know this actually it's funny because I, I use this product um, independent of knowing this and I actually recently found out and I'm like this makes so much sense this is actually now I don't know if it's been reformulated or just repackaged but this is basically their EGF ampule and um, I actually use the EGF ampule and I reviewed it probably over a year ago now and I didn't really like the EGF ampule I didn't feel like it really did anything for my skin and that's exactly how I feel about this Sika Relief Ampule. So it's really interesting that they they just kind of rebranded this a little bit, but I feel the same way about this product. It doesn't do anything. It really doesn't, especially as a product that uh, markets itself as super concentrated, super potent, super effective for the skin. It just, it doesn't do much. With something that contains a high amount of centella with the word relief in it, I would imagine that if I put this on my irritated skin, I should get some relief, right? And this just isn't really a remarkable calming product either, you know? I'm, <laughs> I'm not like an expert or anything, but I just, I have so much experience with irritated skin and so much experience with, with products that do calm down my skin. This is just one that doesn't really work for me. And so it's just really kind of like, uh, it's really exciting. Whenever I come across this online, I'm like, this is exciting. You know, it's it's cute, it's mini, it's packaged in two different little um, areas and then you break the seal and you shake it up. That's exciting. You know, the fact that they say that this is super potent and everything, it makes you think it's gonna wow your skin. This is like the most concentrated, little gorgeous ampule. It's not, it just in my opinion, it's just really not. It's just not a super wow impressive product. And I'm gonna go there, okay, I'm gonna go there. This is really wasteful. You know what I mean? This is really wasteful. I mean, first of all, we've got all the box, right? You know, so that's, you know, whatever, that's recyclable, but you know, that's one thing. And then it comes with these two ampule bottles. And because there's a pump inside of here, right? Cause you gotta pump it and then shake it all up and everything, it's not recyclable. It's not, you can't recycle like the little metal parts and stuff and you really can't take this, you can't get it apart. You know what I mean? You can't, you would really have to pry the metal off of this in order to get that to um, be recyclable and to take all those parts out. So I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna go there. Because it's not impressive, I also have to kind of call out the excessive packaging. It is something that we do need to think about um, and something that I know is important to a lot of you guys. So I really wanted to point that out too, that this looks really cool, you know, looks really promising. But uh, in my opinion, my experience, you know, everybody is different. It could work for you, but for me, it just really, you know, thumbs down. <laughs> two thumbs down. Oh, that was kind of fun, right? You know, like I said, it changed my idea at the last minute. Um, but I actually kind of like the format of a few different brands, just one, you know, one product, one good one, one maybe bad one. I kind of like that. So if you guys also liked it too, you maybe want me to do some more in the future. Let me know what different brands you want to see. Let me know in the comment box below. And don't worry, I will definitely keep doing like the one brand best and worst of. Um, but this was kind of a fun format too. If you enjoyed the video it was helpful to you but you haven't subscribed to my channel and you made it this far in the video um, please consider subscribing to my channel if you want to see more from me I do release two new skincare focus videos every single week and then turn on those notifications because then you're not gonna miss when I upload the new video I hope you guys are healthy happy and safe wherever you are in the world right now and I cannot wait to see you in the next video I'll talk to you soon bye <laughs>